Yes, this morning, Trump is calling Clinton's email scandal worse than Watergate. Joining us right now is Texas Congressman Michael Burgess. Congressman, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining good us. Good morning. Thanks for Do having me Do you on. agree with Trump on this? Worse than Watergate? Yeah. And we'll see where it goes. I mean, it certainly looks uh, very disturbing as this stuff comes out drip, drip, drip. So do you think anything's going to be done about it? See this and, and think, wow, I mean, all of these backroom dealings. Well, I think Chairman Chaffetz has said he is going to have hearings on uh, after on the, the election. Though, well, I don't know that uh, when the, what the time frame is. That during uh, uh, the investigation in Benghazi, remember we came back or the committee came back in 2012 and had a hearing in October. There's no reason in the world that it couldn't happen. You know, so Watergate was largely about abuse of power in the executive branch, but it also introduced the phrase, the cover-up is worse than the crime. And we see here, Congressman, an undoubted cover-up. Now, what they were covering up is certainly open to speculation. This new batch of emails reveals that it could have been this collusion this uh, between the State Department and the FBI, at least a quid pro quo offer. How much can come out in the next 22 days, however, through through congressional action versus these WikiLeaks? Well, that, in, that, that is, I will tell you, as a member of Congress, that's concerning to me. Sure, you want the entire story to come out. The time frame is condensed. We do have an election on November 8th, and that day is immobile. It's, it's going to happen. Um, what you really don't want to see is the revelations come out after Election Day. Uh, then the consequences just become very, very severe. So then, I mean, can anything be done about it once it comes out after Election Day and Hillary Clinton is the president? Well, that would depend upon the actions of the current president. There are things, of course, you remember uh, Ford famously pardoning Nixon. It would be unusual to start a presidential term with a pardon. I guess it could occur. Congressman, talk about the ability of the Republicans to hold the Senate and House. I mean, we saw kind of a market sell-off last week when it looked like that after all of the, issue, the recent issues with Donald Trump that, um, that the Republicans could lose a significant number of seats even in your chamber. No, I, you know, honestly, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I do think the House is, I don't want to say safe, but I think the House is going to remain in can control. The Senate has always been a question mark just because the number of seats the Republicans are defending. But, I mean, here's the bigger thing. I'll do everything I can on the House side to try to create the right kind of legislation for national security, for health care, for tax policy. But if you don't have a president down at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue who's willing to sign those policies, it's uh, all that work is for nothing. So, and we saw that over and over and over again in the Obama administration. So there's a reason to believe that if we have a divided government, nothing gets done for four years. Well, it's not that nothing gets done, but the stuff that gets done isn't, uh, isn't perhaps doesn't have the impact. Well, look, we've had one, one and a half, one, one point one percent growth for I don't know how long. People want jobs. The way you get jobs is to get economic growth. And you don't get economic growth with type of regulations that are coming out of the federal agencies during this administration. That has to be reined in. It it has to. What, what do you want to see the Trump camp focus on tomorrow night in the debate to really refocus? What's most important to you? Well, what I've said over and over again is issues, 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 policy, policy, policy. And I don't care which issue. I don't care which policy. But uh, that's where I want to see the focus. Uh, obviously, for me, I'd, I'd love to see the focus on health care, Obamacare. Oh, my gosh, what a disaster. And it's getting worse uh, literally by the hour. Remember, uh, uh, they always say that the first step in recovery is you've got to admit you have a problem. Uh, Governor Dayton did us all a favor. Bill Clinton did us all a, a favor by this telling is, us that this is so this is such a dreadful program. And you were an OBGYN before going into politics. You and several doctors in Congress recently said that Obamacare is about to collapse. It, it does look like it's teetering on the brink. What le what leads you to that? Diagnosis. Well, look at the look at the increase in the premiums. Look at the number of counties across the country that have only one insurance uh, opportunity. That's really not a choice. That's really not competition. If there's only one, remember when Obamacare was sold, it was well, we've got to get we've got to increase the amount of competition. They've destroyed competition in the commercial insurance market. And what's Hillary's answer? She's going to do a public option. She's going to increase the penalties. She's going to increase the federal subsidies going into the exchanges. Look, when has the vast infusion of federal dollars ever created a lower cost for anything? But people love Medicare, and that's how they're going to sell it. Older people love Medicare, even though it's going to be bankrupt, what, in about 12 years, I think? Well, depending on which clock you use. 
And, and this is the problem in Medicare. So people who have paid into the system all their lives will tell you that this is not a benefit. This is something that's not entitlement. It's something that I've created for myself. Although that they're taking out more than they ever three, put in. Three to one. Right. That's right. And, that, and, that, and therein is the problem. Yeah. Uh, and the public, um, the, uh, um, the public option, the uh, um, premium support that was talked about in the House budget for several years really is the correct direction to go with Medicare, Medicaid, a block grant or per capita cap back to the states. All of these things, again, I would encourage our candidate, uh, Donald Trump, to talk about um, because if you don't, the, the, nothing else can happen. And the entitlement is going to eat the budget. And, and Obamacare is more like Medicaid, which we already know is largely bankrupt. Congressman, Bill Clinton's comments against Obamacare, deliberate or accidental? Man, I don't know, but what a gift. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't look against towards the bottom. Just well, take maybe it. he was just trying to tell supporters, don't worry, she said she wants to build on all the regulations, but we'll change Obamacare. Yeah, Was that a is, hidden message? It's a crazy system, and I agree with him 100%. It is crazy. And, and remember two years ago, um, almost exactly two years ago, Chuck Schumer, the, who will be the, the lead Democrat in the Senate next time, said, oh, we focused on the wrong population. We did Obamacare. We, we fixed it. We, we hurt the people that we should have helped, and right. we helped the people who don't vote. And it was kind of a stark revelation when he made it, but very accurate. So so why? I mean, he, he can make that revelation now I mean, it, because he didn't read the 3,000 pages. I mean, why? How, how is he coming to that revelation now? Well, uh, and he didn't know it beforehand. Well, he should have known it, and and I think uh, many of us tried to tried to talk about this. Remember those town halls in 2009? How how severe they were, and I had, would I would have 2,000 people show up at an August town hall in a little town in in Texas, and what the people were telling us was, don't mess up what we have, but if you're going to do anything, help us with cost. We failed on both accounts. Wow, Congressman, good to see you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much, Thank you. Congressman Michael Burgess, joining us there.